Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's a pleasure for me to speak uh, on behalf of GCL Solar System and GCL Solar Energies. Uh, before I start my talk, I'd like to give uh, some brief introduction of GCL, uh, the companies. The company was founded about 30 years ago, so we're, uh, we're coming from making, uh, become uh, IPP producers. You know, initially, our business is doing uh, coal-fired power plant. About uh, six, years, six years ago, we get into the solar business. So you know, uh, we first started the polysilicon business. Now, by the end of this year, our polysilicon capacity is about 17,000 metric tons. So that's the equivalent of 10 gigawatt. So now, nowadays, we are the number one polysilicon producer in the world. Now, about two years ago, we get into the, uh, the wafer business, the, the, uh, the solar wafer business. Now, our uh, annual capacity by year end of 2011 is about a 10 gigawatt as well. So it's about 50% of the worldwide demand. So we also now, we're number one in uh, the wafer capacity. So uh, having said that, you know, um, our company is based in Shanghai and have you know, a lot of production capacity, about 18 factories in Jiangsu province. So we're based in China. So today I'd like to maybe uh, speak more about the perspective of doing a solar business in China. As you know, uh, in China, the solar, uh, the China energy demand is grows rapidly. China now is already the number one in coal production and consumption, and the number one in electricity generation and consumption, number two in energy production and consumption, number two in oil consumption, and number two oil importer just after United States. In 2010, China consumed 3.2 billion tons of coal, an increase of 10 billion tons of coal compared with 2005. According to China's most recent published five-year plan, our GDP will grow about 7 to 8% per year, and energy consumption will also continue to grow in the foreseeable, foreseeable futures. So we are really facing a serious challenge in energy supply going forward. Since 1993, China becomes net oil importer. Oil imports grow on average 50 million tons per year. More than 50% of China oil supply come from imports. Since 2009, China also becomes the night coal importer, even though China has the largest coal production. Natural gas only accounts for 4% of energy consumption. In 2010, China imports over 10 billion cubic meters of natural gas. But China is a country that has limited energy resources. The coal supply for China can only last for 160 years, the natural gas, 50 years, for oil, only 43 years. So China has really had very limited time span. So it is everybody's responsibility as a global citizen to face the global climate change, to meet the low carbon and low emission target. China, no doubt, will play a key role in these initiatives. During the last five year period, China has reduced its energy consumption per GDP by 20% saving about 630 million tons of coal per year, reducing carbon dioxide emission by 20%, resulting in 1.55 billion tons of carbon emission reductions. However, China total emission also grows. It grows 33.6% to 8 billion tons per year, accounts for 23% of global emission, and become number one in carbon emission in the past US by more than 20%. So that's a sad fact. Based on China's next five-year plan, our GDP will grow 200% by year 2020. But energy consumption will also grow. The energy consumption will double by the times. By two year 2020, the renewable energy will account about 15%. So without renewables, the greenhouse uh, the carbon dioxide emission will at least grow 60 to 70 percent and reach 30, 13 to 15 billion tons, accounts for 40 percent of global emission. So it is really a serious, serious, you know, uh, problems, and it is an option that nobody is willing to take if we go in that route. So my, in China, my personal opinion is solar energy will play a very huge role in China low carbon energy development for the following reasons. Number one, solar is abundant. The energy released from the sun per second is the equivalent of burning 128 million tons of coal. And only one out of 22, one, only, one out of two billions reaches the earth. 
The equivalent, that amount of energy is equivalent to burning 5 million tons of coal. Now, if you can collect just the 40 minutes of all energy radiated on Earth from the sun, it is enough to supply the entire global energy demand for the whole year. And you know, give you another example. If you use just one, 120 liters of solar heater for a year, it will save about eight trees, 200 kilograms of coal, and about 160 cubic meters of natural gas, and save elect electricity about you know, uh, 1,700 kilowatt hours, and 680 kilograms of carbon dioxide emission. Compare the av available renewable energies that can be developed in China. Solar accounts for 100,000 gigawatt per year, and wind about 1,000 gigawatt, hydro about 500 gigawatt. So solar is 100 times bigger than the next available renewable, the wind. And also solar is best suitable for the distributed generation and uh, consumption. As you know, China has a huge populations. And uh, you know, if you can imagine if every roof put the solars, you know, each roof is small, but collectively it could be a huge impact. So that's uh, China's belief, you know, renewable generation, especially distributed generation will be the future. And the solar produces no wastewater, no gas, and no carbon dioxide emissions. And energy generation only also matches a key, you know, a peak demand. Uh, and solar industry actually in China start to develop and mature in scale. Now, um, the crystalline, you know, the majority of the uh, solar industry is doing the crystalline uh, silicon energy. The energy conversion efficiency grows about in a half a percent every year, year after year. And the cost coming down dramatically. You know, a few years ago, the polysilicon is at 400 kilograms, $400 per kilogram. Nowadays, you can buy for $25 per kilogram. So it's drop, it drops dramatically. So it's a huge drop in, in terms of uh, the cost. In 2015, you know, uh, we predict the solar energy price will reduce below 15 US dollar cents per kilowatt hour without government subsidy. And that actually reached great parity in many areas if you're doing self-consumption. So in 2011, the global PV market is estimated to be around 20 gigawatt. It grows nearly 30% compared with 16 gigawatt in 2010 and 200% with uh, 2009 of 7.2 gigawatt. So cumulatively, the total solar installation already over 40 gigawatt. And uh, the annual, uh, the China 2011 installation is estimated to be around 2 gigawatt. So, so far, uh, Europe still accounts for more than 80% of the total uh, global installations. The top 10 countries, including uh, Germany, around 7.4 gigawatt, Italy, 2.3, Czech Republic, 1.5, uh, France, 700 megawatt, Belgium, 400, Spain, also around 400 megawatt. But Japan in, in the US is emerging very rapidly with 900 megawatt installed in 2010. What is most exciting for me, I think, is now, you know, in the beginning, the solar industry, when they first developed, is only Germany is a major you know, market. Right now, there are more than 100 countries has a solar policies, and the solar is being, is being installed everywhere. Now, let's look at the China PV industry landscape. China has already formed large-scale production base. The module capacity reaches, reaches over 10 gigawatt in 2010. It's around 45% of global productions. And the China market also developed rapidly. In 2010, about 500 megawatt. 2011, 2 gigawatt. It, in, 2000, it, in 2012, it may become the biggest market. It also has developed a complete supply chain. There is over 20 to 30 polysilicon manufacturers, over 60 wafer and the solar cell manufacturers, and over 300 module manufacturers. And the 16 companies have listed you know, internationally, and also a 16 company listed, you know, uh, public listed domestically. And annual sales is over 300 billion yuan. And the import export is about 22 billion US dollars, and employed over uh, 300,000 uh, people. Now let's talk about China national uh, solar policies. Based on the, you know, the next uh, five years plan of China, there are seven stri uh, strategic industries will be heavily promoted. That's including renewable energy, energy saving and environmental protection, new energy uh, automobiles, new materials, biology, advanced capital equipment, and ITs. 
So clearly, the new energy policy, the low carbon policy, plays a, a key role in the center stage. And just recently, on uh, July 24th of 2011, the NDRC, which is the National uh, Development and Reform Committee, has issued a national tariff, a feeding tariff for China. So that's uh, it's about $15 uh, per kilowatt hours if you do inst installation before September of 2011. And uh, the, the tariff will be reduced after sep September to about uh, 13 you know, US dollar cents per kilowatt hours. Now, uh, renewable energy legislation in China has also established the following. The overall target in 2015 will be about 15 gigawatt, and by the year of 2020, it will be 50 gigawatt. Now, the China potentially will be also become the biggest market. Now, the annual uh, energy installation in 2010, 2015, and 2020 will be around 96, 140, and 180 gigawatt, respectively. Even in 2020, accumulated PV installation reaches 200 gigawatt. That's still less than 6% of the total installation, much less than the 10% you know, installation you know, in Germany. In the next 10 years, on average, annual uh, energy installation will reach 90 gigawatt. Even with 10 gigawatt of solar installation, it is still only accounts for 10% of the total annual installation, much less than the 6%, which is Germany is doing now. But the China market estimate, we will estimate that 2010 will be 1 gigawatt, 2011, 2 gigawatt, and 2012 will be you know, over 3 gigawatt, and 2015 beyond will be 5 gigawatt a year. So that's, uh, you know, after 2016, it's going to be over 10 gigawatt a year and reach 80 to 100 gigawatt total installation by year 2020. So China will become the biggest market for solar installations. So in conclusion, I will say if China implement its energy saving and the low carbon emission policy strictly in the next 10 years, energy con consumption per GDP will reduce by 30%. Coal needs will reduce to 5.1 billion tons annually saving about 2 billion tons of coal and the reduction of 470 million tons of carbon emissions. If a renewable accounts for 15% of the total energy use, we will save another 700 million tons of coal. So renewable may not solve all of the problem near term, but it clearly is the direction we must go and it will be, have a major impact in, uh, for our industry. Thank you very much.